So today we're going to be looking at the power half and going over a few tips that you can use so you can consistently get back points from this technique. You're going to be looking at four wrestlers mainly. That is Greg Bozak, Josh Humphreys, Ryan Preish, Preish, I'm probably butchering his last name, and Denton Spencer. We're also going to look at a high school match at who's number one between Victor Vornovich and Jesse Vasquez. All of the tips in the video are going to center around the idea that you need to catch your power half underneath the elbow, not the armpit. That is the main key that all of these guys do consistently. Your opponent is very weak at the elbow. They cannot muscle down the same way like they do against most half Nelsons because most people put it right underneath the armpit. So let's get right into it. So the first guy we're going to look at is Greg Bozak. So he's using his free hand to push against the opponent's head right underneath the elbow, and then he's using his free hand to push that arm in so the opponent cannot use it as a post. Now watch what happens. The opponent is able to get back to their base because they get that arm free. This is going to happen a lot. He's able to get his arm free, snake it through. He still get a full set of back points, but he's not able to at least fight for a pin, right? So watch what happens next time. Same thing. He's not just pushing down on the head. He's also pushing it sideways towards that opponent's armpit. So same thing, but this time he uses his shoulder to pin that wrist down, and then he creeps his other hand there to catch it. This way, even though he's still not able to get the pin, he's able to hold him up for his back for longer and be very close to getting the pin in the, the entire match. And then lastly, he's able to get it again. At this point, this guy's probably probably like, what in the world? And obviously, he gave it up. Now, this is against Max Dean. So they're able, you will notice all throughout the video, they're able to do it against very high-level competition. He's using his free hand to push that elbow in. If you don't push that elbow in, guys, they, their back won't turn, and it will end up being called for a potentially dangerous before you get any back points, and you have to start all the way over, get your leg, get your boots back in, everything like that. So you want to try to avoid it being called for potentially dangerous as much as possible. Once again, right underneath the elbow, pushes that arm in. He's able to get another set of back points. Now, a lot of people are going to claim that this will automatically be called for potentially dangerous in high school. That is not the case at all. All of these guys, they didn't start doing this in college. They all did the same as that power half in high school. I'm even going to show a high school match at the end. So, this is against Stephen Buchanan. You can't see much. All you was able to see was that with his free hand, he pushes the arm in. But I, would, I just wanted to show it. You saw it against Max Dean. And then you saw it against Stephen Buchanan. Last, we're going to have Tanner Sloan. So very good competition he was doing this against. He's not underneath the armpit. He's underneath the elbow. But it's just something else in this clip. He, in, he eventually got the pin against Tanner Sloan. But there's something else in this clip I wanted to show. So he got his full set of four back points. But watch what he does. So Tanner Sloan almost gets his arm free like the guy in the first clip did. He's going to use his shoulder to guide Tanner Sloan's wrist towards his other hand. And then he catches him. And then he slowly, methodically keeps him on his back and he's able to get the pin. Just a few months ago, I actually um, did a video um, on Instagram that I posted, including Denton Spencer, about this same concept. It was, it was captioned, not captioned, but on the video, it was on wrestling tip, catch the half Nelson underneath the elbow, not the um shoulder and he Greg Boza actually commented and said yeah, this is a, this is an absolute key so just something to, to keep in mind right that was a pretty cool cool little comment next we're gonna look at Josh Humphreys he was absolutely disgusting on top I know that had to be pain, a painful experience uh, he was really good so he also catches at the half but he did something a little different here that I never seen anyone else do and I'm showing you multiple different guys because while they all do the same thing as far as catching it underneath the elbow, then they all kind of have different ways of getting there. And they all do the same thing sometimes, and then other times they have like very individual things that they may do. So just soak in all the knowledge you can. So right here, he's going to, with his free hand, he's going to grab that opponent's, his opponent's wrist. Then he's going to grab his own wrist 
and torque that elbow up. This keeps the elbow up. And the reason why you want to catch it at the elbow is because you want the elbow as high as possible so he can't fight down. This one pretty basic. He's just going to stretch him out right, right at the elbow, punch the half. The dude almost couldn't do anything about it. Get some back points there. Here, same thing. Right underneath the elbow, just runs it over. Two more clips of him doing it. I believe it's only two more clips. So, right here, same thing. Very slow bottom. And this is a control position. Once you're here, guys, this is a control position, right? You do not have to rush it. You actually don't want to rush it too much because that's how you can get end up getting called for potentially dangerous. They're going to turn over most of the time. So obviously he ends up holding him down on his back. This is against Jared Frannick. This is the third place match at D1 NCAAs. So this doesn't just work against guys that you're way better than. This is not working just against Fish. Obviously I showed that with Greg Bozak. And when I showed him doing it against Max Dean, Stephen Buchanan, and Tanner Sloan, all three of those guys are guys who at some point in their careers have been ranked as high as one or two in the nation, right? So pretty big deal. So against Jared Frannick, right at the elbow, he's going to use his free hand to push the arm in, but you can't see it. It's on the other side. Get a quick two count, but you know in those high-level matches, uh, two quick back points can change the outcome of the entire match. Now we're going to look at Ryan Price. I'm, I'm sure I'm saying his name wrong. Um... But look at what he does. So what he does is a little different as well. So he's grabbing. Let me start over. He's grabbing. He uses his. He's using his free hand to grab the wrist of his opponents, the wrist that's behind the opponent's head. And maybe I think he's pushing in with it. Looks like because if you try to put your elbow up and you lock in the wrist and you push the wrist in at the same time, it's it puts a lot of torque on that shoulder. A lot. You probably can't even see me do the arm thing once I actually edit it. But you guys get what I'm saying. Again, he d does it. So that free hand is pushing that wrist in. Let me try to do it in the middle. So what I'm doing is this. And it puts a lot of torque on the shoulder. He did it for a third time. Just to show you that he did it three times in one match. This next example I like. So watch what happened. This is a very important thing to keep in mind. So the opponent's wrist is going to get caught underneath him, and he tries to wrist roll out. He doesn't have a near, he doesn't have wrist control, but the wrist is his opponent's wrist is stuck underneath his own chest. So he's going to naturally want to get it out, right? As he's rolling, he catches it at the elbow. This is almost automatic. This is almost automatic. And then you ask yourself the question: If you ask yourself good questions, well, how can I repeat that position? How can I get them to wrist roll out? Because obviously that was his chance. That was not something that Ryan decided like he was trying to set up. His, the, his opponent's wrist just got caught underneath. But then and Spencer is actually really good at getting his opponents to consistently wrist roll, which sets him up for that power half. This is him against Max Dean again, <laughs> right? So Max Dean, he's able to get a, turn him over pretty easily with that half Nelson. Um, keep him on his back, and he eventually got the pin. But what's special about this example? So the opponent tried to like lock his own hands to stop it, but it really didn't. So he's gonna push that elbow in by the try at the tricep, and he's gonna grab that wrist again. He really liked using his free hand to grab that own um, wrist, grab his opponent's wrist, and keep it until the opponent was on their back, obviously. And then last example with him, I believe. So pay attention. Push down on the head. Catch the elbow. Use that free hand to push the tricep in. Push the arm in. So the same thing is going to happen that how happened to Greg Bozak in the first clip. He's going to end up turning him over to his back. And the, the bottom guy, Max Lyon, is going to get that arm free. Snake it through. Get back to his belly. Okay. Same thing that happened in the very first clip of the video against Greg Bozak. So how does he adjust? You have to make these match adjustments. Don't just be wondering what happened. Know what went wrong. So he goes back to the power half, right at the elbow. He's not underneath the armpit. He's not underneath the armpit at all. Sorry for the movement. 
this is where most of you guys are. This is where most of you guys are. They're consistently right here. That's important to pay attention to. He catches the arm. Y'all notice that? This time, the Max Lion right here, he catches the arm. Max Lion can knock Snake that arm through. And he eventually gets the pin. Now looking at Denton Spencer. I'm going to eventually do a video on Denton Spencer. Now this first this first match is just to show that he did it three times in one match. Same thing I did with Ryan Price and um, Red Bozak. And he can also do it to both sides. A lot, most of them can do it. I think all of them can do it to both sides. I know for a fact that him and Josh Humphreys can do it to both sides. It's a very easy move to learn. Um, so if you ride, and that's the benefit of riding double boots. So just a quick tip. When you're doing a power half, if I'm doing it with my left arm, my right leg has to be in. I can't do it with one leg in if it's the same side leg, right? Or they're just going to keep turning through because I don't have their hip flopped in. If I do it with my right arm, my left leg has to be in. Now, all of these guys ride two on um, ride double boots. So that's why they can decide which side they decide to go to, right? Because they can do either one. Push the head down, catch at the elbow. He grabs it up on his wrist, and he doesn't keep it. So he, he the half the half Nelson hand, he actually pushes it down. To, he puts the fist on the mat, and then as he keeps going, he obviously scoops the back of the head. That's what most guys do. But I'm actually going to do a video on um, title 40 Powerhouse from Denton Spencer because I, I, I think he's the best at it. He's really, really good at it. He did it consistently. Um, obviously, I wasn't going to put all 40 clips in this video, though. Because that just would be dumb. Notice how he pushed the elbow. Catch it. So he pushed the tricep. Pushed the arm in at the tricep. This is against Tony Negron. So then he's going to do it on the other side the next time. But watch what he does. Remember what when I was talking about making them wrist roll? So he catches in their wrist, right? He has wrist control. So naturally the bottom guy. Yeah, that's disgusting. So naturally the bottom guy is going to wrist roll out in order to clear his wrist. When he does this, he's he's setting himself up for the power half. It, it goes in that smoothly every single time. Now, I can't admit if that happened in a high school match and the, look, and the guy was that flexible and the elbow was kind of past the head like Tony's was, it's probably going to be called potentially dangerous. But that's not the case with most of these pins. Right here, he has nearest control. You can see right here that the opponent has, has his arm out like he's in the middle of a wrist roll. And then he catches it, just turns them over. Sorry if you guys hear the air now. The air just turned on. Pushes that, pushes the arm in, tricep. Really easy. And then he's just going to push the head down. And turn it and turn them over, turn them right over, get an easy pin. So now we're gonna look at this high school match. A lot of stuff to look at. First, his leg is not in, it is across the body. This is very important. This is a very important detail to look at. He's gonna have like some fake figure four. His the sh his shoelaces aren't actually in the decrease of his knee, but that's why it's not considered a figure four. But he doesn't actually have a leg in, so he catches it at the elbow, but the hips are not locked in. So because of this. The bottom wrestler, Jesse Vasquez, is going to be able to just roll through. The bottom wrestler is going to be able to roll through. The air is off now. Once again, he goes back to this fake figure four. Right? His leg is not actually in. So when he tries to go back to the half, Jesse Vasquez, the bottom guy, is able to just shift his hip sideways in order to kind of negate it. Then he finally, right here, he finally decides to put double boots in, actual double boots. Catches it at the elbow. Easy back points. Easy back points. No struggle whatsoever. Once he did it correctly. Vasquez is going to get back to his belly. Eventually, right? And then he still has the boots in. He's just going to catch it again right, at the, right underneath the elbow. Use that free hand to push the arm in. Pretty basic, pretty 
pretty simple, right? And he gets the pin and who's number one to retain his number one ranking in the country. If you really want to get super good at the top position and be able to consistently get pins and bat points from it, I have a course for $29 called Dominate the Top Position. I go over this. This is just a small section in that course. I go over the series that Spencer Lee and Real Woods use to consistently get pins and bat points with the ball arm. I go over mat returns. I go over the claw rod. I go over the partial one going right into the fireman's carry. Um, there's plenty of things that I go over in that course to help you at the top position. Because I think I think that isn't as taken advantage of as possible. Because with a takedown, right? Because I was one of those guys who just did this. I either did this for optional start, or I just let them up. I was good at the double leg. But that's tiring, right? You get two points, give up one point. You get two points, give up one point. With turns, you're racking up two, three points. And you don't you don't have to give up an escape in order to keep going. You can just keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. When I had got good at the Eastern or the two-on-one road through tilt, that's when my wrestling really opened up. So hope you guys check that out, and I'll see you in the next video.